Mikveh or Mikveh, Hebrew, Mikwe MQ Modern, Mikveh, Tiberian, Mikwe, Place Mikvo, Mikavoth, Mikvit, or Yiddish Mikves, lit. A collection, is a bath used for the purpose of ritual immersion in Judaism to achieve ritual purity. After the destruction of the temple, the mikveh's main uses remained as follows by Jewish women to achieve ritual purity after menstruation and childbirth before they and their husbands may resume marital relations by Jewish men to achieve ritual purity after ejaculation as part of the traditional procedure for conversion to Judaism to immerse newly acquired utensils used in serving and eating food to immerse a body as part of the preparation for burial tahara, most forms of impurity can be nullified through immersion in any natural collection of water However, some impurities, such as a ZAV, require living water, such as springs or groundwater wells. Living water has the further advantage of being able to purify even while flowing, as opposed to rainwater which must be stationary in order to purify. The mikveh is designed to simplify this requirement, by providing a bathing facility that remains in ritual contact with a natural source of water. In Orthodox Judaism, these regulations are steadfastly adhered to and, consequently, the mikveh is central to an Orthodox Jewish community, they formally hold in conservative Judaism as well. The existence of a mikveh is considered so important that a Jewish community is required to construct a mikveh even before building a synagogue, and must go to the extreme of selling Torah scrolls or even a synagogue if necessary, to provide funding for its construction. Etymology In the Hebrew Bible, the word is employed in its broader sense but generally means a collection of water. History Before the beginning of the 1st century BCE, neither written sources, nor archaeology gives any indication about the existence of specific installations used for ritual cleansing. Mykavoth appear at the beginning of the 1st century BCE, and from then on ancient Mykavoth can be found throughout the land of Israel as well as in historic communities of the Jewish diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> Requirements of a mikvah The traditional rules regarding the construction of a mikvah are based on those specified in classical rabbinical literature. According to these rules, a mikveh must be connected to a natural spring or well of naturally occurring water, and thus can be supplied by rivers and lakes which have natural springs as their source. A cistern filled by the rain is also permitted to act as a mikveh's water supply. Similarly snow, ice and hail are allowed to act as the supply of water to a mikveh, as long as it melts in a certain manner. A river that dries up on a regular basis cannot be used because it is presumed to be mainly rainwater, which cannot purify while flowing. Oceans for the most part have the status of natural springs. A mikveh must, according to the classical regulations, contain enough water to cover the entire body of an average-sized person, based on a mikveh with the dimensions of three cubits deep, one cubit wide, and one cubit long, the necessary volume of water was estimated as being 40 seah of water. The exact volume referred to by a seah is debated, and classical rabbinical literature specifies only that it is enough to fit 144 eggs. Most Orthodox Jews use the stringent ruling of the Avraham Yeshaya Karelitz, according to which one seah is 14.3 liters, and therefore a mikveh must contain approximately 575 liters. This volume of water could be topped up with water from any source, but if there were less than 40 seahs of water in the mikveh, then the addition of three or more pints of water from an unnatural source would render the mikveh unfit for use, regardless of whether water from a natural source was then added to make up 40 seahs from a natural source. A mikveh rendered unfit for use in this way would need to be completely drained away and refilled from scratch in the prescribed way. Although not commonly accepted, at least one American Orthodox rabbi advocated a home mikveh using tap water. Water. As water only flows through pipes open at both ends, the municipal and in-home plumbing would be construed as a non-vessel. So long as the pipes, hoses, and fittings were all freestanding and not held in the hand, it could be used to fill a mikveh receptacle that met all other requirements. There are also classical requirements for the manner in which the water can be stored and transported to the pool. The water must flow naturally to the mikveh from the source, which essentially means that it must be supplied by gravity or a natural pressure gradient, and the water cannot be pumped there by hand or carried. 
It was also forbidden for the water to pass through any vessel which could hold water within it however pipes open to the air at both ends are fine as a result, tap water could not be used as the primary water source for a mikveh, although it can be used to top the water up to a suitable level. To avoid issues with these rules in large cities, various methods are employed to establish a valid mikveh. One is that tap water is made to flow over the top of a kosher mikveh, and through a conduit into a larger pool. A second method is to create a mikveh in a deep pool, place a floor with holes over that and then fill the upper pool with tap water. In this way, it is considered as if the person dipping is actually in the pool of rain water. Most contemporary mikavoth are indoor constructions, involving rainwater collected from a cistern, and passed through a duct by gravity into an ordinary bathing pool. The mikveh can be heated, taking into account certain rules, often resulting in an environment not unlike a spa. A mikveh must be built into the ground or built as an essential part of a building. Portable receptacles, such as bathtubs, whirlpools or jacuzzis, can therefore never function as mikvehs. Reasons for immersion in a mikvah Topic. Historic reasons Traditionally, the mikvah was used by both men and women to regain ritual purity after various events, according to regulations laid down in the Torah and in classical rabbinical literature. The Torah requires full immersion After carry Normal emissions of semen, whether from sexual activity, or from nocturnal emission. Bathing in a mikvah due to keri is required by the Torah in order that one should be allowed to consume from a heave offering or sacrifice, while Ezra instituted that one should also do so in order to be allowed to recite words of Torah. The latter case is known as Teviloth Ezra, the immersion of Ezra. After Zav, Zava, abnormal discharges of body fluids. After Zaroth, certain skin conditions. These are termed lepra in the Septuagint, and therefore traditionally translated into English as leprosy. This is probably a translation error, as the Greek term lepra mostly refers to psoriasis, and the Greek term for leprosy was elephas or elephantiasis. By anyone who came into contact with someone suffering from ZAV, Zava, or into contact with someone still in Nida normal menstruation, or who comes into contact with articles that have been used or sat upon by such persons, by a Kohen who is being consecrated, by the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur, after sending away the goat to Azazel, and by the man who leads away the goat, by the Kohen who performed the red heifer ritual, after contact with a corpse or grave, in addition to having the ashes of the red heifer ritual sprinkled upon them, after eating meat from an animal that died naturally classical rabbinical writers conflated the rules for Zava and Nidah. It also became customary for Kohanim to fully immerse themselves before Jewish holidays, and the laity of many communities subsequently adopted this practice. Converts to Judaism are required to undergo full immersion in water. In modern Judaism Some Jewish funeral homes have a mikveh for immersing a body during the purification procedure before burial. Topic. Orthodox Judaism Orthodox Judaism generally adheres to the classical regulations and traditions, and consequently Orthodox Jewish women are obligated to immerse in a mikvah between nidah and sexual relations with their husbands. This includes brides before their marriage, and married women after their menstruation period or childbirth. In accordance with Orthodox rules concerning modesty, men and women are required to immerse in separate mikvah facilities in separate locations, or to use the mikvah at different designated times. Converts to Orthodox Judaism, regardless of gender, are also required to immerse in a mikvah. It is customary for Orthodox Jews to immerse before Yom Kippur, and married women sometimes do so as well. In the customs of certain Jewish communities, men also use a mikveh before Jewish holidays. The men in certain communities, especially Hasidic and Haredi groups, also practice immersion before each Shabbat, and some immerse in a mikveh every single day. Although the Temple Mount is treated by many Orthodox Jewish authorities as being forbidden territory, a small number of groups permit access, but require immersion before ascending the mount as a precaution. Orthodox Judaism requires that vessels and utensils must be immersed in a mikveh before being used for food, if purchased or received from a non-Jew. 
Obligatory immersion in Orthodox Judaism Immersion in a mikveh is obligatory in contemporary Orthodox Jewish practice in the following circumstances Women Following the nidda period after menstruation, prior to resuming marital relations Following the nidda period after childbirth, prior to resuming marital relations By a bride, before her wedding Either gender as part of a conversion to Judaism Immersion of utensils acquired from a Gentile Topic. Customary immersion in Orthodox Judaism Immersion in a mikveh is customary in contemporary Orthodox Jewish practice in the following circumstances Men By a bridegroom, on the day of his wedding, according to the custom of some communities by a father, prior to the circumcision of his son, according to the custom of some communities By a Kohen prior to a service in which he will recite the priestly blessing, according to the custom of some communities Before Yom Kippur, according to the custom of some communities Before a Jewish holiday, according to the custom of some communities Weekly before Shabbat, under Hasidic and Haredi customs Every day, under Hasidic custom, immersion for men is more common in Hasidic communities and non-existent in others like German Jewish communities. Topic: <inaudible> Recent Orthodox writings. Rabbi Aryeh Kaplan in Waters of Eden connects the laws of impurity to the narrative in the beginning of Genesis. According to Genesis, by eating of the fruit, Adam and Eve had brought death into the world. Kaplan points out that most of the laws of impurity relate to some form of death or in the case of nidda the loss of a potential life. One who comes into contact with one of the forms of death must then immerse in water which is described in Genesis as flowing out of the Garden of Eden the source of life in order to cleanse oneself of this contact with death and by extension of sin. Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook offered an additional message for mikvah. By immersing ourselves in water. We are forced to recognize our existential estrangement from the physical universe. How long can we survive underwater? The experience of submerging drives home the realization that our existence in this world is transient, and we should strive towards more lasting goals. Topic: <laughs> Conservative Judaism. In a series of responsa on the subject of Nidda in December 2006, the Committee on Jewish Law and Standards of Conservative Judaism reaffirmed a requirement that conservative women use a mikveh monthly following the end of the Nidda period following menstruation, while adapting certain leniencies including reducing the length of the Nidda period. The three responsa adapted permit a range of approaches from an opinion reaffirming the traditional ritual to an opinion declaring the concept of ritual purity does not apply outside the temple in Jerusalem, proposing a new theological basis for the ritual, adapting new terminology including renaming the observances related to menstruation from Taharat Hamishpacha family purity to Kadushat Hamishpaha family holiness to reflect the view that the concept of ritual purity is no longer considered applicable, and adopting certain leniencies including reducing the length of the Nidda period, Isaac Klein's A Guide to Jewish Religious Practice, a comprehensive guide frequently used within conservative Judaism also addresses conservative views on other uses of a mikvah, but because it predates the 2006 opinions it describes an approach more closely resembling the orthodox one and does not address the leniencies and views those opinions reflected. Rabbi Miriam Berkowitz's recent book Taking the Plunge, A Practical and Spiritual Guide to the Mikvah Jerusalem, Schechter Institute, 2007, offers a comprehensive discussion of contemporary issues and new mikvah uses along with traditional reasons for observance, details of how to prepare and what to expect, and how the laws developed. Conservative Judaism encourages but does not require immersion before Jewish holidays including Yom Kippur, nor the immersion of utensils purchased from non-Jews. New uses are being developed throughout the liberal world for healing after rape, incest, divorce etc. or celebration milestone birthdays, anniversaries, ordination, or reading Torah for the first time. As in Orthodox Judaism, converts to Judaism through the conservative movement are required to immerse themselves in a mikvah. Two Jews must witness the event, at least one of which must actually see the immersion. Immersion into a mikvah has been described as a very emotional, life-changing experience similar to a graduation. Topic. Reform and Reconstructionist Judaism 
Reform and Reconstructionist Judaism do not hold the halachic requirements of mikvah the way Orthodox Judaism does. However, there are growing trends toward using mikvah for conversions, wedding preparation, and even before holidays. In the 21st century the mikvah is experiencing a revival among progressive Jews who view immersion as a way to mark transitions in their lives. Open. Mikavoth welcome Jews to consider immersion for reasons not necessarily required by Jewish law, they might immerse following a divorce or medical treatment, to find closure after an abortion, or to celebrate a life transition, among other reasons. Progressive Jews may also use the mikvah for conversion. Topic. Requirements during use of a mikvah There is supposed to be no barrier between the person immersing and the water. The person should be wearing no clothes, jewelry, makeup, nail polish, fake nails, or grooming products on the hair or skin. For more observant Jewish women, an attendant will assure these requirements are met. Showering or bathing and carefully checking the whole body is therefore part of the religious requirements before entering the water of a mikvah for a woman. Topic. Hair According to rabbinical tradition, the hair counts as part of the body, and therefore water is required to touch all parts of it, meaning that braids cannot be worn during immersion. This has resulted in debate between the various ethnic groups within Judaism, about whether hair combing is necessary before immersion. The Ashkenazi community generally supports the view that hair must be combed straight so that there are no knots, but some take issue with this stance, particularly when it comes to dreadlocks. A number of rabbinical rulings argue in support of dreadlocks, on the basis that dreadlocks can sometimes be loose enough to become thoroughly saturated with water, particularly if the person had first showered. Combing dreadlocked hair can be painful. Although a particularly cautious individual would consider a single knotted hair as an obstruction, in most cases hair is loose enough for water to pass through it, unless each hair is individually knotted. Allegorical uses of the term mikvah The word mikvah makes use of the same root letters in Hebrew as the word for hope, and this has served as the basis for homiletical comparison of the two concepts in both biblical and rabbinic literature. For instance, in the book of Jeremiah, the word mikvah is used in the sense of hope, but at the same time also associated with living water. O Hashem, the hope mikvah of Israel, all who forsake you will be ashamed because they have forsaken Hashem, the fountain of living water. Are there any of the worthless idols of the nations, that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Is it not you, Hashem our God, and do we not hope nekava in you? For you have made all these things. In the Mishnah, following on from a discussion about Yom Kippur, immersion in a mikvah is compared by Rabbi Akiva with the relationship between God and Israel. Akiva refers to the description of God in the book of Jeremiah as the mikvah of Israel, and suggests that, just as a mikvah purifies the contaminated, so does the Holy One, blessed is he, purify Israel. A different allegory is used by many Jews adhering to a belief in resurrection as one of the thirteen principles of faith. Since living water in a lifeless frozen state as ice is still likely to again become living water after melting, it became customary in traditional Jewish bereavement rituals to read the seventh chapter of the Mikvah tractate in the Mishnah. Following a funeral, the Mikvah tractate covers the laws of the Mikvah, and the seventh chapter starts with a discussion of substances which can be used as valid water sources for a Mikvah snow, hail, frost, ice, salt, and pourable mud. Topic. Controversies Topic. Use by Reform and Conservative Converts The Reform Movement's Israel Religious Action Center sued the state on behalf of the Reform and Conservative, Masorda movements to allow members to use publicly funded mikavoth. The case, which took ten years to resolve, resulted in the Israeli Supreme Court ruling that public ritual baths must accept all prospective converts to Judaism, including converts to Reform and Conservative Judaism. In his 2016 ruling, Supreme Court Justice Eliakim Rubinstein said barring certain converts amounts to discrimination. Until this ruling Orthodox officials barred non-Orthodox converts from using any mikvah, claiming their traditions do not conform to Jewish law and the people they convert are therefore not Jews. 
Rubinstein noted, "...once it established public mikvahs and put them at the service of the public—including for the process of conversion—the state cannot but be even-handed in allowing their use." Rubinstein said, "...the State of Israel is free to supervise the use of its mikvahs, so long as it does so in an egalitarian manner." Intrusive questions In 2013 the Israeli Center for Women's Justice and Kalech, an organization committed to Orthodox Jewish feminism, petitioned the Supreme Court to forbid attendants from asking intrusive questions of women at state-funded and operated mikvet. In response, the chief rabbinate said it would forbid questioning of women about their marital status before immersion. The complaint had charged that the practice represented unacceptable discrimination. In 2015, however, the ITIM Advocacy Center filed a complaint with the Israeli Supreme Court on behalf of 13 Orthodox women against the Chief Rabbinate and the Jerusalem Religious Council, insisting that women be allowed to use the mikvah, "...according to their personal customs and without supervision or with their own attendant if they wish." The complaint charged that Chief Rabbinate is ignoring directives passed in 2013 that allow women to use the mikveh facilities without being asked intrusive questions by attendants. In June 2016, the Chief Rabbinate agreed to allow women to use a mikveh without an attendant. See also Baptism Bath unit Conversion to Judaism Gusel – Full Body Washing Ablution in Islam Mikvah – Section of the Mishnah discussing the laws pertaining to the building and maintenance of a mikvah. Misogi Nidah Ritual Washing in Judaism Topic. Footnotes Topic. References Isaac Klein, A Guide to Jewish Religious Practice, JTS Press, New York, 1992 Kalel Menachem, Kitzer Dine Tahara, A Digest of the Nidda Laws Following the Rulings of the Rebbes of Chabad, Keho Publication Society, Brooklyn, New York, 2005 External links Mikvah.org Global Directory the Mikvah, by Rivka Slonim Chabad. Org. The Mikvah, A Spiritual Experience Pathways to the Sacred Video Clip with Anita Diamond Mikvah's Mikvah, Immersion in the Bible Europe's Oldest Mikvah in Syracuse, Italy 1. Purification Rituals in Medieval Judaism, videos made by scientists of the German Research Foundation for DFG Science TV